So we're going to be talking about the perfect ratio yes. of marketing and learning to grow your business. So first, let's ask everyone, what percentage of your business do you think you should be spending on marketing? And we're going to talk today about the fact that you should be spending 50% of your time on marketing. I know. When we learned that, you guys, we were like, what? Yeah, that's impossible. What um, but that is actually the reality that we face as business owners. 50% of our time should be used on marketing. Now, there's a ton yeah. of different types of marketing out there. And if you like just did a Google search on marketing, right. what it is, the different types of, of marketing that's out there, you're going to hear about all different ways. And obviously, we are service providers. So some of the things that are out there aren't going to apply to the way that we need to market our business or, and definitely wouldn't apply to our budgets <laughs> for right. marketing our business either. So, but, yeah. but the main style that we teach in our 20 K program, which you guys hear about often is called, actually called inbound marketing. If you didn't know that yeah. and um, inbound marketing actually is used to attract, it's used to engage and then it's used to create a lifelong client. And inbound marketing is really to have a lifelong client, to have, the right type of client to work with the people you want to work with inbound marketing is the best way mm -hmm. to market because it's, it is in a way people are coming. When you use inbound marketing, you are attracting people to your business where people are coming to you and they're not thinking that you're marketing to them. Right. And they're not feeling like they're being sold to or they're mm -hmm. being marketed to. They're feeling like you are being helpful and that, wow, here's someone that can help me out. Mm -hmm. And you are marketing because you're marketing with help. But it's so different than throwing Facebook ads out there at people or, you know, putting up a banner or putting an ad in a bridal magazine or any mm -hmm. of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it, even putting a Facebook ad out is called that's called more interruption marketing. People right. are going through their life, just going through their business and suddenly they see your ad. It interrupts what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, that's that doesn't mean that doesn't work. But inbound marketing is much more effective to grow your list of quality leads, right. to grow your email list too, because not everybody, remember if they're on your email list and they like hearing from you, mm -hmm. they're not going to unsubscribe. They're going to stay on your list and eventually they're going to need you. Right. Whether it's for their wedding, their honeymoon or a trip later mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's talk about real quick, a couple of different ways. So first part of inbound marketing that we mentioned was the attracting. You attract yeah. clients and one of the ways is through marketing via content, which we talk a lot about in our program yeah. and on our Facebook live show all the time. You can also market through digital marketing or social media marketing, right? right. So that's where I think that what happens in our brains <laughs> is we think of marketing as just this one thing, right? And, um, and because of that, that's why we would answer something like, well, we should use we should have spend 10% of our time marketing or 15% of our time marketing. And then otherwise, and then on top of that, we get ourselves into this tunnel of marketing is only social media. Marketing is only this one way of right. doing things. Right. And then that's where we, we um, end up feeling like, well, I've already maxed out here. I don't know what else I can do because you're only thinking of this one way essentially of marketing ourselves. So when it comes to attracting Lou and I talk a lot about that content marketing, you know, creating blogs and putting different things, uh, pieces of content out there, that are out there that are helpful, you know, making that lead magnet, all of those right. fun things. And of course, digital marketing would include things like your, um, your website and uh, email marketing and that sort of thing. Right. That, so they're coming inbound means they're coming in. You're pulling them into you without right, having right. to wave at them and grab them. Mm -hmm. You're not running out there grabbing them and pulling them to your business. Right. You're putting attractive things out there that are making them come to like you. Like bait. Right. Like bait. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when they inbound to you, they're much less, they're much more, they're not resistant to right. hearing from you. They're not resistant to your advice. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. when you have to go out and grab somebody like interruption marketing. Right. Or you're just already, like, hey, look, notice me, notice me, right. notice me. And you're just like, I need to find clients. I need to get clients. If you are thinking that that's how it works. So. Well, they're just more resistant because right. mm -hmm. even brides think of a bridal show back in the day when we did them and you know, brides, all human beings don't like to be sold to. So mm -hmm. brides already are at, at a show. Their guard is already up a little bit. They're already approaching certain booths, like kind of like, uh, leave me alone or just tell me what I, I'm just going to ask you my question. I'm leaving. Right. 
but sometimes they go to booths that have, have this really like cool thing that maybe the bride is like, oh, what is this? Something helpful, mm -hmm. something that shows them a new piece of knowledge, something they've never seen before, maybe a wedding setup. They've never, oh, I never saw that. And then suddenly you go from being a salesman to some, a resource. Right. So that's the key. Yeah. You don't want to be a salesman. You want to be a valuable resource. Yeah. So then that next part of it is engaging. So we're going to engage these potential clients yeah. through e our email marketing, right? Once they download our freebie, our lead magnet, then we can start sending them more helpful information via email, right? We can create chat box. We can, we can create a Facebook group. We can have conversations. Yeah conversation starters that we do on social media, like on our stories, our social media stories. So these are ways to engage with people. So that's all part of this whole process as well. And then you want to create those lifelong clients by being yourself, by being an excellent advisor. And then you want to incorporate what would be considered customer marketing. So customer marketing, I'm not sure if everybody does this, right? So I wanted to bring this up today because okay. I believe that this is something that you're going to want to put in place in your business this year as part of your marketing strategy. Okay. So yeah. examples of customer marketing could be sending out a newsletter, whether that be a monthly, a quarterly, whatever it is that you can handle and manage, right? And do it with excellence. Right. Um, with helpful, out, yes. with helpful information, helpful information, and you could even link some of those articles in your newsletter to blog posts or videos you've made. Right, right, exactly. Helpful, um, sending helpful. out birthday cards, sending out anniversary cards, yeah. uh, sending out any sort of holiday greetings. You know, um, if you are, if you become Facebook friends, let's say with your clients, and you notice that some big life change happened, they bought a house, they're having a baby whatever that might be have that is also part of marketing so another thing i wanted to talk about or not one other but another real quick thing i wanted to talk about today is that in 2022 you may want to consider partnering with um doing some partner mar marketing okay so let's say you have a brand that you really like um that you enjoy working with uh that you know you just have a good connection with your business development manager. Maybe you've already done a lot of sales with this specific brand. Consider doing some partner marketing this year. Our budgets, right? Our budgets still aren't what they were before. Okay. Mine included. I'm no different than you. I'm still recovering from what we've gone through in this industry. So my marketing budget isn't as high as it used to be just plain and simple. But when we partner with a brand to market, then we can do what's called a co-op, right? Where they're going to kind of go halves with you. So let's say you come across an event and you're like, this is different. This is something I'm interested in doing because it's not your traditional, you know, bridal show. Maybe it's more of a boutique event. Then you can approach a brand and say, hey, I want to do this event. Would you, you know, partner with me? Of course, you know that when you do that, you're really just going to be representing that one brand. But that business development manager could also be there with you as a per, as a person that is going to represent you going to help um you know include help with the sales and that sort of thing especially if you're maybe not somebody who like naturally likes to talk to people whatever that might be so that might be something you would want to consider this year for your business okay and then another thing that i want you to think about this year um, for your marketing is that word of mouth marketing aspect okay um, so like I said, there's a ton of different ways to market yourself. There's a lot of different styles and types of marketing. So I wanted to just get us out of that thought process of marketing is just this one thing and this one way of doing things, right? So um, you've got to find out, ask yourself, take inventory. Do you have a system, an actual system in place to get reviews or to ask for referrals? An actual system in place. Is it a random thing? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Or do you have an automated or a system that you put in place to ask for reviews and ask for referrals? And where are those reviews going? Where do you want people to write a review for you? Do you want to do it on like a, um, a, a Google review type of thing? Do you have another service that you like to do for reviews? Do you have something set up for that? And then another thing when it comes to word of mouth is do you ask your clients to follow you on social media? I think that a lot of times 
I have gotten referrals because I'm friends with my clients on social media and then they are like, it's so easy for them. Basically, it's super easy for them to um, to basically say, oh, go, go ahead and connect with Tammy. And they just, you know, they just basically tag me in the comment, right? Connect with, so then it's super easy for them to connect me with that potential person who's looking for a referral, right? So um, making sure that you encourage people to follow you on social media. So yeah, we have to stay out in front of our uh, in front of our clients. We've got to stay in front of them via social media. We've got to stay in front of them via our um, via our emails, our newsletters, whatever it is that you want to do regarding that. So another thing I just wanted to point out too, like as a destination wedding specialist, and I know I've said this before, but it's always a good reminder. We work with our bride and groom. They come to us, right? They know us. We get to know them. It's a good relationship. But when the guests start booking with the group, the guests don't know who you are and what you do. They just think that you're the person they need to reach out to because you are the destination wedding specialist. They don't know that you can also offer these other different ways, these other different types of travel, right? If that's what you do, if you are a travel agent as well as a destination wedding specialist and you can do family reunions and you can do girlfriend getaways and birthday trips and family vacations and whatever else it is, it is your job to make sure that you have a system and a process in place something to make sure that all of those guests know what else you can do for them because they're going to get to know you and they're going to like working with you. They're going to like that you actually responded to their question. They're going to like that you helped them out with making a change. All of those things are going to become that real human being that people enjoy working with. So make sure that you always think about how can I make sure that I'm sharing with this guest that I do more than just destination weddings and think about it from that perspective because that's going to be part of that word of mouth marketing. So we've always talked about how our business exploded once we started doing destination weddings. And the reason it did is because with that bride and groom came, let's say 30 people, 40 people. Well, all of a sudden I'm in front of and have a connection with helping 30 to 40 people then it's my job to let them know, hey, these are the other things that I do uh, so that I got referrals for more than just destination weddings. And then those guests would start becoming my clients for their own family vacations or whatever type of trip that they want to do, a romantic getaway or whatever. So definitely make sure you think about an um, actual marketing strategy and map out a plan of how you want to do things. Now, once you start, once you're in the business for a while, the per this percentage of marketing, right? This 50%, where you use your time is going to change. It's going to change. If you're brand new, the majority of your time right now is going to be spent on that attraction, attracting, engaging, getting people to become your lifelong customer, right? You're gonna be spending the majority of your time there, but once you get that down pat, once you have that automated and you've got your lead magnet and you have a funnel and you have those things in place and you're solidifying clientele, pretty soon you're not having to necessarily worry about that as much, right? You're gonna to wanna to love on your customers. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have like this referral type plan in place or some sort of way that you can remind people, hey, if you know somebody who's looking for blah, blah, and blah, just let me know, you know, but you have to make sure that you're out there and kind of networking for yourself in a way. And then of course, help having those like really great customers that you have, like be your best referral. They refer for you, they're marketing for you, right? You can coach them up and, and um, in terms of just your relationship with them and they will, they'll just all day long refer you all the time because they just really like you. And then that's way, way easier information. Hopefully it was helpful to you. And um, of course, if you haven't already grabbed my free resource, go to brightattract.com to get that. And this is a checklist for you to create that whole funnel for attracting um, destination wedding clients. So um, definitely check that out if you haven't uh, utilized that. And I hope everyone has an awesome start to their new year. I can't believe it's 2022, but look at that. It is. Holy, holy moly. Don't know. 
it's crazy to me but here we are so it is the reality that we're in all right have a great great day great rest of your week thanks for being here and we'll see you later